right, we're going to head to YouTube.com. We're going to log in in the upper right. Click on your account. Go to Creator Studio. On the left, you'll see the Creator Studio menu. We're going to pick Live Streaming. And we're going to go to Events. You see a couple of events already lined up here. I'm going to go to New Live Event in the upper right. I'm going to call this Test Event. Give it a title. And I'm going to come down here and say that we'll start on the 24th. Sometimes it takes an extra click or two. And then we're going to start at 2 p.m. I'm going to add an end time. And that end time says it's going to run through four. That's fine. Really, we just want to set expectations uh, for whoever our audience is on this is when we start and this is when we finish. It's a good idea to add something in the description box because your viewers will know what you're going to cover before you cover it. Adding tags makes this searchable. If this is public, it allows people to find your broadcast easier. In the upper right, if we choose public, unlisted, or private, that is our settings that determines who's going to be able to find this event. Public, anybody can find it, even through search. Unlisted, they can only attend with a link. This is most common in what I select. Private is really if you want an audience of just you. Uh, this is a great way to create a video, not a great idea if you want to do a webcast. So let's go unlisted. We can go custom for our event, but a custom event requires additional software beyond the scope of this workshop. We can go quick event, that's what we're going to choose, and that's going to set this for Google Hangouts on Air. Now notice this flashed over here. We are going to have to change that this is going to start on the 24th. It changed our date, so we got to double check that. When I changed over to Hangouts on Air, dates modified, you don't want to throw that off when you create your event. Head over to Advanced Settings. We want to make sure Live Chat is enabled. That allows for more interaction. Everything else is fine here. And everything else is good here. When we get down to comments, under the recording choices, we want to allow comments, but we can set a filter to catch potentially inappropriate comments, or we can even set it more restricted where they have to be approved before comments show up. I'm just going to set the filter on. Usually catches everything. If not, you can go in and moderate your comments below your video. Uh, enable your DVR. This allows a copy to be posted afterwards so students can watch your video if they couldn't make it to the webcast. For stream optimizations, we want to go low latency. This is lag, so if I say something, the students don't want to hear it 60 seconds later if we're trying to interact. This allows for about 10 to 12 seconds of lag between when you say something and when they hear it. Still allows for interaction and still allows for a DVR copy. Alright, so we've set everything up. Let's head back to the basic info tab just to double check. It's starting and ending where we intended it. I've got my uh, title in there. I'm going to go ahead and hit Create Event. It's now going to list Test Event as one of my upcoming events on my list of live streams in Creator Studio.